Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in November is an interesting holiday. It has become for many the one time of the year that they pause to give thanks to God for God's many blessings. Unfortunately, this holiday, like other holidays in our country, has a checkered history, for it is stained by the oppression and genocide of Native Americans. I'm grateful that the truth about this holiday has come to light. I'm always happy when truth comes to light. But fret not, for while the holiday is stained, as our psalmist says today, it is good to give thanks. Not just in November, every day should be a day of thanksgiving. And springtime is as good a time as any to give thanks. Why? Because spring follows winter. And winters, especially in our context in Chicago, are often hard and cold, dreary and gray. And I know many people love winter, but they are still cold and often gray. And by God's infinite wisdom, spring which follows is marked by growth and colors and sunshine and warmth. And not only the spring season in nature, but the spring season of our lives, the times when we emerge like plants and flowers from a long, difficult season of life. We are collectively sharing a springtime right now. We have been out of our sanctuary as a congregation for at least 14 months. And we are emerging with new life, new friends, reunions. Welcome again back, Esther and Peggy, and, and celebrations. Can we give thanks one more time by the clapping of our hands for this new season in Hyde Park Union Church, for the return of Esther and Peggy, for the, the graduations that have happened, for all the wonderful things that we have to celebrate. Don't worry, I'm not going to force you this morning because the reality is that not everyone feels like giving thanks. After what we've been through collectively or more importantly, individually, gratitude is not easily accessible for everyone. This is the reality in our gospel scripture this morning. It's a familiar story of the 10 people with leprosy. Listen to the text again. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. The gospel writer called them lepers, labeling them and identifying them by their condition. That gives you a glimpse into their reality that they were labeled, known by their condition, isolated, and following the rules of their condition of keeping distance from others. We don't know how long they've had leprosy, but we can relate a bit to keeping distance from people Isolation is difficult. It's like a long winter indoors, away from people. But they see Jesus, and they call out for mercy. Jesus tells them to do what lepers or those with leprosy were told to do when they are clean. Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Ten people with leprosy in the text were made clean. The scripture says, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, fell at Jesus' feet. The text says he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean? But the other nine, where are they? 
Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? One of the 10 people with leprosy was so filled with gratitude that he turned back praising God loudly and fell at Jesus' feet giving thanks. Nine of the 10 people with leprosy did not return and give praise to God. 90% did not return in that moment and say thank you. All 10 were healed made clean, no longer needing to isolate, could resume life with family and friends, at least that's what we believe, but only one came back and said, thank you, nine did not. The text doesn't say why they didn't come back, but my Holy Ghost imagination and just a little understanding of humans being one myself allows me to imagine why. For some of us, gratitude is not accessible, as accessible as it is for others. For some of us, gratitude is an afterthought. Gratitude might be awkward after such a difficult stretch of life. I know it doesn't seem like it should be awkward, but for some it is. You may wonder, should I be saying thank you? After all, it's been hard, very hard. I don't feel like saying thank you. When I have so many unanswered questions or I'm still grieving, or I'm struggling with the fact that I had to suffer like this, I didn't deserve that. The nine, 90% did not praise God nor say thank you to Jesus and possibly could not come to the place of gratitude in the moment after a long period of suffering. I mean, after all, they had just been healed. To just transition so quickly is not feasible for everyone. The world had just opened up for them. What does that mean? Am I ready? Is it really over? What if it's not really over? After such a long time of isolation of our bodies and concentration of our minds on one thing, COVID-19, how do you just switch that off and start getting back to normal with Gratitude? Some of us are still trying to find, figure out what really happened, why it happened, and we're busy getting on, or we're get busy, excuse me, getting on with life because there's so much to do that we weren't able to do. Gratitude is quite frankly the farthest thing from some of our minds. And possibly for the first time, and I've preached this text before, I understand the nine. For the first time, Pastor Sarah, I even see Jesus' words as a hint to clergy and Christians and those who care for others. Hear Jesus' words. Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? For the first time I hear Jesus saying to us, the one will be found. Somebody needs to care about the nine. 90% of the folks who just went through a traumatic experience of isolation, staying away from people, no hugs, no contact, haven't seen loved ones, somebody needs to pay attention to the nine. The 90% for whom gratitude is not yet accessible because they lost loved ones, lost friends, lost jobs, lost livelihoods. Somebody needs to pay attention to the nine. The 90% who have left churches or never had a church, somebody needs to pay attention to the nine. The 90% for whom gratitude is not yet accessible. And they think they are all right, but they are wielding guns and cars as weapons and hurting people because hurt people hurt people. Somebody needs to pay attention to the nine. For the first time in all of my years of preaching and hearing preachers preach this text, I have only heard criticism of the nine. But for the first time, thanks to a pandemic, I hear Jesus differently this morning. I hear Jesus saying, what he said, which is, were not 10 made clean, but the other nine, where are they? We have a job, church, to care about the nine. And just in case you're among the nine for whom gratitude is not accessible quite yet, know that Jesus 
cares. He asked about you. Not just about the one who came back, fell at his feet and said thanks, but about the nine who did not. And so do I, and so do, does Pastor Sarah. And this is where the wisdom of the psalmist comes in. The psalmist, Psalm 92, verse 1 says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Hear those words. It is good to give thanks. I don't know about you, but that is also hitting my ear differently this morning as wise counsel for those who are struggling. It just sounds like wisdom, doesn't it? It is good to give thanks. The psalmist gives us some wisdom. It is good. A spirit of gratitude is good. It is good for us. Good for the soul. The wisdom here that I hear from the Holy Spirit is that while it may be hard for you to give thanks, know that it is good for you to give thanks. Why is it good? Quick story. You all know I just spent six days in Jamaica on vacation. And one of the things I did for myself is I got a massage at the spa. And the Jamaican woman masseuse, after she finished a wonderful massage, she took the sheet that I filled out and she looked and she said, you don't look 53. You, there's no way you're 53. You don't look that young or that old, excuse me. And I said, well, I'm beginning to feel younger, but I have been feeling old. This past year has been hard. And if you all know me and most of you are getting to know me, I started doing what? Crying. And then my Jamaican sister started doing what? She started crying. And she said, it was very hard. She said, there were times when we didn't know if we were going to eat. Well, you know what that did about my complaints. I shut them down because I did not have a problem finding food to eat. And so God in that moment put my complaints, even the loss of my sister and others, just, just put them and kept them and buried in my spirit. There's no way. I was gonna pour all of that on her. But in that moment, we felt one another. We had compassion for one another and we, we re respected each other's struggle over the past year. And then we turned and said, thank you to God. We said, but, but we're here. And she said, I'm employed again because the resorts and the hospitality industry, which is the main industry of Jamaica had opened back up. And she's employed, and she said, my husband is a man of faith, and he encouraged me the entire time that God will make a way. And she said, we never missed a meal, but there were times I didn't know where it was going to come from. And then we began to thank God, and then we realized that my time was running out. I signed up for a 45-minute massage, not a 90-minute massage. It was time to go. But that was such a sacred moment that we moved from lament to thanks to gratitude. It was healing to both of us to acknowledge one another and to give thanks to God for God is good. Why is it good to give thanks? Because giving thanks can help you keep things in perspective. Why is it good to give thanks? Because giving thanks can humble you. And, and strangely, I think she was humbled as well in a strange way. It is good to give thanks because it opens the door to healing. It breaks the chains that are keeping you bound. It's simply the wisdom of the ancestors of our faith that it is good to give thanks. And not just the psalmist of Psalm 92, but the psalmist of Psalm 7 says, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to God's righteousness. And I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the most high. The psalmist of Psalm 28 says, the Lord is my strength and my shield and God, my heart trusts, and I am helped. 
And so I give thanks to the Lord. Psalmist of Psalm 50 says, sacrifice, thank offerings. That means sometimes it's not easy to give thanks, but it's a sacrifice. Fulfill your vows to God and call on God in the day of trouble and God will deliver you. The psalmist of Psalm 69 says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify God with thanksgiving. And the psalmist of Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes her boast of the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt God's name together. The Israelites struggled in the wilderness. They struggled on their way out of Egypt. They struggled to get to the promised land. But thank God they had psalmists among them who knew the wisdom of giving thanks. When you don't feel like it of giving thanks when times are hard or giving thanks when there's a long road ahead, give thanks. It helps lift the burden of the past and gives you strength to keep going to the journey of head, giving thanks. is a spiritual practice that aids our journey in this life. I can't explain all how it happens, but I promise you that giving thanks simply works. Giving thanks keeps your life in perspective. Giving thanks reminds you that there is indeed a God whose ways are not our ways and whose thoughts are not our thoughts. That's why the psalmist said, give thanks unto the Lord for the Lord is good and God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks for what? I'm glad you asked. Verse two says to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Anybody ever been grateful that you woke up in, this mor in the morning and then grateful that you made it home safely to lay down at night? That's what the psalmist is saying. Giving thanks for a brand new day with brand new mercy and for making it through the day. Verse four says, for you, O Lord, have made me glad by the work, all the works of your hands I sing for joy. Giving thanks for creation. The psalmist says that the works of God's hands has made him glad. That was me on vacation, just paying attention to creation, to God's handiwork all around me. Please don't lose your awe of God's handiwork. Remain in awe of the wonderful creation and continually give thanks for the trees and for the oceans, for the birds and the fish of the sea, that the sun rises every day unhindered. To humanity, the different hues and languages and personalities, just open your eyes and know that only God has created such majesty and give thanks and it just puts some things in perspective. Verse 12 says, the righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. That's what the text says. And I so enjoy the palm trees of Jamaica. So these verses spoke loudly to me. Give thanks for those among us whom God continues to bless with long life, amen? And in that long life, the word says that you are still growing and you're still producing fruit, even flourishing like palm trees. For you, I give thanks. The psalmist says it is good to give thanks. It is wise to give thanks. It is good for us. It's good for our well-being, for our spirits to give thanks in the springtime of our lives. After a long period of struggle, of pain, of isolation, it is good to give thanks for God's faithfulness, for new possibilities, for new hope. It is good to give thanks in Jesus' last words to the one who did come and fall at his feet and say thank you, are instructive to us as I close. Luke 17, 19 says, then Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made 
you well. Jesus named that his faith had made him well. Some translations read, have made you whole. And the wisdom is that gratitude to God keeps you in relationship with God. That's faith. And that it prayerfully keeps you in relationship with the community of faith. And Hyde Park Union Church is one community that has your wellness in mind. Let's seek wellness, wholeness together, for it is good to give thanks. God bless you.